Welcome to the new show, we're in Fanity FC. I'm David Copeland-Smith and I am joined by my amazing co-host, World Cup and Olympic medalist, Lauren Sesselman. What's up everybody? And I know a lot of you know me as Sess. So I'm just so excited to be here. As you can see, the energy is absolutely electric in here. You can't even really hear me that well. But we have some amazing halftime performances going on. But today, let's talk about the first half underway. It's 1-0 right now. How do you think the first half went? You know, Lauren, let's talk about Kennedy Fuller. Amazing. Love her. Young kids come in, looks like a boss. Losing 1 0 right now, the team, but I just feel that we need to create a few more chances going forward. Yeah. Get Sid involved in the game. Get Sid on the ball a little bit more. Yep. Alyssa, I want Alyssa to be a little bit more greedy with that <laughs> ball. And Megan Doggedy Howard as well. She could have had an easy yeah. shot in that first half. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with the way the team are playing. It was always going to be Bay Area coming out. That first 20 minutes, yeah. swinging there's a new kid on the block, yeah. that new team. They've got class players. I mean, what can you say? Yeah, and you know, both of these teams are, you know, first game of the season, first big game of the season. They're assessing each other. You can see how Bay FC, they got some veteran defenders back there. They are really closing down that outside. You know, Angel City wants to play to Emsley. They want to play to um, Alyssa and get them really down those flanks right there. I think for me, the biggest thing, because obviously I'm, you know, I'm a defender, so I assess the defense, is I want to see making sure, as we see how that first goal happened, I want to make sure that they're, they're playing a little bit more tighter in the back, and I think they're going to clean that up, talk about that at halftime. Coming out into the second half, um, you know, as you can see, Alyssa and MZ, they switch sides, so I think it's going to be an am amazing second half. Let's go. Let's go, Angel City. A podcast for the fans, by the fans. Dive deep into the topics the other shows miss, raw and uncensored. And he's going to play team ball. His legacy is at stake. Rare, hard-hitting interviews with players, coaches, and you, the super fans. I'm not hating. I'm like, okay, cool. Good. Three championships in five years. He's more than good, bro. Profanity Nation. Listen live or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Okay guys, welcome back to BMO Stadium. Unfortunately, we didn't get the result that we wanted. It was 1-0 to Bay FC. I kind of expected it. Brand new team coming out swinging. Lauren, your, your predictions were entirely wrong <laughs> they today. Were, they were so wrong, but I was so poor. And Angel City coming out in this second half and, and scoring some goals. And you know what? They had a lot of opportunities. You know, Doherty Howard, she had some great chances in that first half, that header in the second half. Um, Lauren, let's talk about that penalty that wasn't. Oh, the handball. You know, I didn't know you could almost pick the ball up and yeah, not get the penalty. I'm, I not, know. I'm not questioning the referees, though, because I would never do that. They've got a hard job. At the end. Yeah, great very, job. Very, very close. And Messiah as well. Just a Where was MA, that bar? MA at the end. Yeah, great job. Very, shot. very close. And Messiah as well. Just a cleared off the line. Mm -hmm. But let's, let's focus on the good things, I thought. Sarah Gordon versus El Shawala in that second half. I love and you'd that be surprised how long it <laughs> took me to learn how to say El Shawala correctly because <laughs> I didn't want to butcher it. Um, but, you know, I'm so proud of Sarah because, like, mm -hmm. that first half, obviously, El Shawala got in and scored. This half, there was a very, you know, big moment where it's 50 50. Mm -hmm. El Shawala came through her, but 
Sarah stopped it. It was a free kick anyway, but she, then she pretty much nullified her. Her and yeah. Paige did really well. Other good things, Giselle Thompson yep. coming on looked electric. I'm so proud of her. Um, yeah, because you played with Giselle, didn't you? Mm -hmm. You'll find a lot of that. Everything we talk about, Laura's like, oh, <laughs> I played against her because she's got a great career. Um, obviously, Giselle coming back and Me massive for the mm -hmm. club, Merritt Mathias yes. coming back as well after injury. Just a little bit disappointed with the result, but again, silver linings, because I'm that type of person, we had the chances. Yep. You know, we looked way more organised second half. We really Definitely. took it to them. Mm -hmm. um, I think we were I mean, finding those gaps a little bit more. Yes, yeah, I'm looking at my notes. I think Bay FC, they were getting tired. I think in the first half when they came out defensively, they were as a unit. And then you saw in the second half, Angel City really started to break them down. They were finding those gaps, those channels in between. And then bringing on the fresh legs, you have Merritt, you have Giselle, you have Messiah Bright coming in, you know, as a bright spot coming off the bench. Coming I'll see what you did then. Yeah. Messiah Bright spot <laughs> yeah, coming off the go, bench. There we go, there we go. And she's not just a pretty face, <laughs> she's a wordsmith. And I also love, because I think it complimented Sid and her aggressive nature and how she's so good at cleaning up in front of the net, where she almost scored a goal there. Where everyone, you, you can hear from this amazing sold out 22,000 crowd. 22,000, 22, which is obviously, 000. you know, the one thing the club does so well is fill this stadium, which yeah. is a big stadium. We need the wins though, to keep do. doing that. Um, as I said, I'm a silver lining kind yes, of person. Yes, I love that. I'm pumped for the next game. I just want to thank everybody at Angel City Football Club for making us feel so welcome at Infinity FC. They were great. Shout out to Lisa. You are awesome. Um, Lauren, great doing it. I'm yeah. looking forward to the next game. Yeah, me too. So let's go Angel City, baby. Infinity FC. Woo! Uh, okay. What was the mic? It was a question. <laughs> no questions. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> Hi guys. Hi. Yeah, sorry about the loss, but seeing seeing Kennedy out there, you know, 17 years old. You know, what has she brought to this team in training? You know, on and off the field, maturity, all of that. And just seeing her out there, what she brought to the team as well. She was she was great. I forget that she's so young because I think she fits in so well. She deserved that start. Um, she just is so, so good for her age. And I think it's incredible to be on the field with such young players um, and just know how much opportunity lies in, ahead of her and how long her career will be and how different her experience will be as a professional than you know we had when we started. And it makes me really, really proud. Um, and you know, she came into a league where there are three teams in California and um, that's not something that I can say that I had. So I'm really, really proud of her. I know she's so close with her family and they're able to be at the game tonight. Um, and I just look forward to see her continue to develop and uh, she was close to putting it in the back of the net. So we'll see that on Friday, I hope. <laughs> Absolutely, and then as captain, vice captain, what was your advice to her entering such a huge moment at such a young age? Did you have any um, advice to her, Sarah? I mean, for me, I didn't necessarily give her any advice. I just wanted to make sure she was good before the game, but I'm so impressed by how composed she's been through it all. Um, like Ellie said, I would never guess she's 17 years old. Mm -hmm. So super impressed by her, super proud of her, and I'm excited to see where her career goes. Hey guys, tough loss today, but at the end of the match, last 15 minutes, it seems like you guys turned up the screws and were really executing in the, the final third. I think you had almost five shots on goal in the last eight minutes alone. Uh, are there positive takeaways going into the next game about how you guys really perform at the end of the game? Yeah, I think there were a lot of positive takeaways. I mean, it sucks to lose at your home opener. It's not how you want to start the season, but there were definitely a lot of positive takeaways. We felt like the second half, we had a, created a lot of good chances. We moved the ball well, um, and ultimately it didn't go our way today. Uh, this is the NWSL, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. But I think we are proud of where we can take this season. And, you know, we have room to grow, of course, but there are a lot of positive takeaways from tonight.
I also think that we did change some things and and get a lot better after probably the first 35 minutes. Um, and we did have chances, but I also have to shout out Sarah and Paige. I think, you know, Oshawala is, is a top, top nine in the world and they really shut her down. And I think the goal we essentially gifted them, you know, is something that we know we have to be focused in our build out from goal kicks every single moment in the NWSL, you have to be switched on. But other than that, I just think that you saw some really, really top defensive skill tonight from our center backs. Over here. Oh, that was um, but I was going to speak to that, Sarah, obviously going against uh, Oswaldo, a really big signing, a uh, two-time Champions League winner. What was sort of your preparation for that and uh, what went into your performance tonight? I mean, um, we obviously do, I'm someone who really likes to watch film on players and know how they are. So going into a game of, uh, with someone that hasn't been in the league is a little bit more difficult. Um, but obviously film and scouting is a big part of it. But I think it was kind of nice going in with more question marks and not knowing what to expect because then you can kind of just get out of your frontal lobe, as I like to say, and <laughs> play the game. Um, but she's an incredible player. Um, it was really enjoyable to go against her tonight. Question. Yeah. Oh. Ali, I'm going to age myself um, here and ask you about uh, your FC Gold Pride coat. <laughs> As you're aging, you're aging me too, then. <laughs> <laughs> and just you know, another full circle moment for you and to have a player. Just ask about him and um, what he's like as a person and as a person. Yeah, you know, I, I wanted to to beat him and his team tonight more than anything, but now that the game is over and, and we can't go back, you know, I have to say how happy I am for, for him and his family, seeing his wife and his daughter. She was a small child when I got drafted to, to Gold Pride, and now she's at Stanford, and, you know, I, I love when good things happen to good people, um, and for him to have this moment tonight, you know, I wish it wasn't against us and and here at home, but um, I think we want to have really good coaches and good people here in the NWSL. And he's, he's a really important addition. Um, someone who understands the game, someone who has a daughter and has raised her to be, you know, in this game as well. So um, it was just, you know, during the game, I didn't think about him being the coach, but after seeing him and, being drafted to that team so long ago and having an amazing rookie season and just being able to think out how much the league, obviously that league doesn't exist anymore, but how much the game has changed in this country since then. And it makes me so happy. And, you know, I think we still have such a long way to go in women's sports, but the only way we can keep going is if we celebrate the small wins and like to have this full circle moment, see how well he's done. Remember the, the FC Gold Pride, may she rest in peace. Um, it makes me really happy and really, really proud um, to still be playing and to to witness the growth of the game. Awesome. Any more questions? Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Let's go. Let's go, Angel City. Hi, Coach. Hey. Plus, um, thinking back to uh, Brights last week, you were think, talking about how you wanted more aggression attacking the final third. Uh, the end of the game uh, was quite urgent. It seemed like you guys were putting things together. Were you happy with, uh, with how things kind of ended there, even though you didn't win the game? No. <laughs> um, I think obviously a little bit of a crazy game. Need to reflect on it a little bit and, and go back and watch it, but that's football. It happens. Um, we just have to be way more ruthless in the box. We created chances. I think we dominated the second half. I think it took us way too long to get into the game. I think 34 minutes before we really started to play. I don't think you saw the real us in the first 34 minutes. Um, but I do think you saw glimpses of what's to come in the second half. Um, we were much, much better. Um, and proud of them for the reaction at halftime. I think, again, just missing that final piece. So um, it's the first game of the season. So much to build on from it and so much for us to take away from it. Finally, uh, oh, yeah. 
facing Russia kind of uh, first time and kind of the, the defensive posture that you had in the game, goal aside, um, what did you think about how your defense performed today? Yeah, I think, again, building off last season, I, we want to be defensively solid. I think we had really good moments. I think they've dealt with her really well. I think it's a brilliant signing for this league, which is going to cause a lot of problems um, for a lot of defenders. But I think outside the goal, we defended her really, really well. We defended the space behind really well um, and didn't really cause us much problems, honestly. Um, but again, again, it's football. You give up one chance, you can lose the game. And I think that's what happened to us today. Yeah, first 34 minutes we got really started playing. Why do you think that was? Um... Yeah, I think I think first game in the base history, I think that probably played into we we thought they were going to come out at us and they didn't. Um and they actually sat off us, but we played like they came out at us. And I think that mentality was a little bit naive of me and a little bit something that I think yeah, maybe maybe they didn't do what we thought they were going to do, right? And I think that took us about 34 minutes to figure it out. I also think when I look at us and, and what we've done in preseason, we didn't do that for the first 34 minutes. And it took us a while to settle into the game. And when you're in preseason, you work on yourself and you build on your identity. And when you're put in a situation that you're then now in this league, you don't know where you are. And I think we came out not knowing where we were going to be. And as we built into it, we saw how much more confident we got. And I think actually now I walk away feeling like, yeah, we, we can be really good. And then the second half um, with the subs, were you thinking timing there? Um, I think you brought Messiah on maybe in the 83rd minute and then there was Giselle in the 82nd. What were you thinking there? Was the yeah, I think it was, It was you always want to look at the game and we had so much momentum in the second half. And it's like, how do you disrupt that momentum when you think it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. So you have to find the right moments to not disrupt that momentum. I think when the subs come in, came in, they did a brilliant job of, carrying on that momentum but you never want to disrupt it so you have to find the right moments and yeah I think there's always hindsight of could you do it earlier you can always look back and think you could do it earlier but it wasn't like we weren't creating and we needed to change something we were creating all 45 minutes of the second half um and I think again you get into that and we've been both sides of it the the game management piece I think they their game management was really smart and that's what you do when you want nil up um and it adds to frustration and it builds up but we created enough chances to win the game. We created enough chances where we should win this game. Yeah. Hi, Coach. Hey. Uh, you know, starting Kennedy today, can you talk a little bit about kind of what she's brought in preseason, you know, everything leading up to this moment, and then why you're so you know confident starting her and her performance as well? Right? Yeah, I think Kennedy is a talent. I think you have to take age out and pick the best players in the moment. And she was ready. Um, she produces. She can play forwards. Um she doesn't play like she's 17. She's not phased by anything. I think when you look at giving players debuts in this environment and this stadium, you have to think about is is it right for them and does it fit their personality and is it the right moment to introduce people in their professional debut? And when I look at Kennedy, I've spent the last couple of weeks getting to know her and knowing is this the right moment? And absolutely, it was the right moment. I think you can see how much of a talent she is and we're excited to have her here um, and continue to to develop her and push her and and. You know, she's a huge part of our team right now. Absolutely. What do you see for her future? Obviously, she's still, you know, so young, but putting a good performance. There. Yeah, I think we have to manage her. Um, I think she is so young and we have to look after her and she's still got a really high ceiling and room to grow. And um, we have to look after her. Like, it's one game and this season, you know, is the NWSL. It's long, it's hard. It's not like there's off weeks. Um, she also plays f f uh, international football and, you know, we want to encourage that. I think that adds to your growth and we just have to manage her and, and how she's going to develop. And your first year as a pro is always hard. You learn a lot about yourself, but she's in a great place. Um, This team is brilliant with the younger players and they want to help them grow. And I think that she will continue to grow as it goes on. Yeah. Thank you. You um, mentioned the frustration about being able to score, but you had, I believe, 18 shots on goal, 41 touches inside. What do you think was missing to make those conversions? Um, I think there's a couple of things. Obviously, when you're at the bay and you're 1-0 up, you're going to put everybody behind the ball and just defend with your lives. And they did that, and they did it really well. Um, there's the being ruthless part. Um, it's, it's the most... NWSL football game I've seen, right? And and again, it happens. And we knew if the longer the half went on, the harder it was going to be. But 
what we do have is belief all the time. And I think you could see that to the final whistle. And we have to remember this is game one. I think we all get caught up in acting like the first game is the be all or end all, but it's game one of a long, long season. And we have to use this game as a huge learning point um, and a huge momentum shift for us. We go in tomorrow, we work hard, we get on the plane to Orlando and, and we put in another shift on Friday. And can you talk about Angelina's effort? Yeah, again, um, so young. Um, still growing, still developing, um, potential to be an unbelievable goalkeeper. And we just got to trust the process. And I think, again, calm, confident, ready for these moments. Um, and she's just going to keep growing as a player as, as she gets more experience and more games under her belt. And um, lastly, about what do you think about F uh, Bay FC's uh, initial start into this league? Yeah, I think they've done a really great job of recruiting. I think they've brought some top talent to this league, um, which only adds to the quality and the strength of the league. Um, I think they have a clear identity and a style. I think they know how they want to play. I think today they came out and made it the occasion it was. Um, and, you know, I think you have to say well done to them on this day, right? They came out with with three points. And um, I think it can only make this league, again, more competitive. You want these teams to come in and be competitive. We want our league to have 14 teams that you don't know who's going to win. Obviously, you always want it to fall your side. Um, but we want the NWSL to continue to be the, the most competitive league in the world, and they've done that. Hey, Bea. Well, this is over here. Yes. Hi, Coach. Hi. Uh, sorry about the last day. Uh, you mentioned earlier just about the defensive effort, particularly against uh, Ashwala. Can you just talk a bit about player match, uh, Sarah Wharton, sort of her defensive effort and what that means to this team? Yeah, I think, you know, when you have a player like Sarah, um, who is able to defend the space behind her and in front of her really well, um, it's really hard to break us down. And I think her partnership with Paige, I think we have such a competitive back line that they're just going to drive and push each other forwards because they're competing every single week to make each other better. Um, and Sarah is a huge part of that. I think, you know, we've we've added an extra responsibility to Sarah now being vice captain. And I think that will just elevate her. Um, that leadership piece, she's a winner. She wants to win every minute of every game. And again, I think her relationship with the backline goalkeepers is something that's really important and will help us to continue to grow. Questions? Again? So next three games are away for us. We're going to Orlando. Now you guys can go for it. We would yes. never disrespect yeah, yeah. referees. <laughs> we need referees. Okay, so we've got Orlando next. Orlando started the season well with a 2-2 tie. Mm -hmm. Then we're off to Kansas, then Chicago. Lauren, what do you want out of those three road games before we're back here April 21st? Look, I think it's just going off the momentum. As you saw coming into this you know, second half, the chances were coming. And I think taking that momentum and going into these, these road games, I think is going to be, is really going to be really big. As we said, it's the first game. They're still gelling. We got a, a couple new faces in there. And I think that they're gonna go into this with, you know, and they got a little something on their back now because they came away with the loss this game. So as a player, you know, you know, you're angry, right? So they're gonna come out strong and I think they're gonna, I think they're gonna Should perform well. Should have seen well. me in my paddle tournament <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> I lost two games of paddle. And you were angry. Furious. So now you're ready Furious. to go back out there. Yes, but I need a little time. Yes. Uh, but no, all seriousness, uh, let's hope we come back with three points. That's a big yeah. ask, honestly. Orlando away is always difficult. Casey at their and new, new stadium. stadium. And then you've got Mal Pugh, Mal Swanson at Chicago. But what this team proved tonight in the second half is that they're capable of anything. We just need to be a little bit more clinical in the yep. final third. I think defensive wise, we really shipped it up. We're good to go. Then come and join us in Fanity FC April 21st. As we are going to be playing the North Carolina Courage. Big game, Sean Nahas' teams are always hyper-organized, yep. difficult to break down. But if we can come back with a few points off the road, yep. what also, do you think, Lauren? Also, I want to see the same type of energy we had for this game back here at BMO Stadium at April 21st. Look for our street team. Yes, look you for our Infinity Street team. You can win two free yep. tickets from the Infinity FC street team. Yep. If you see Lauren, you can harass her as well. <laughs> just, just don't harass me. And then we're good to go. So look out for us outside the stadium. You can win two free tickets. We want to see you here April 21st against the North Carolina Courage. Thank you, guys. And we'll see you next time.